I'm Lois Beckner. I am the uh, program coordinator here at the ARC, and I'm the one that set up the show. And I want to say something to each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for submitting your artwork. Thank you for making art. Thank you for continuing to make art. Um, it's beautiful. Every single piece is beautiful and touching. And I cheated. I bought several pieces before the show even opened. And <laughs> several of the pieces have been going tonight. So yes, we've been selling a lot of your artwork. So hopefully you'll see that probably at the end of January. Um, people are coming in and saying, earmarking stuff saying, oh, I need this piece, I need that piece. So um, thank you so much. And please, please continue to make art. We will have another show next year and I hope each and every one of you participates. Well, I know some of the guys in there, you know, like, uh, well, Waff and Fisher and, you know, of course, Shane and, you know, a bunch of John Jolly, you know, a bunch of guys that are in there. And, uh, you know, so I've seen a lot of the artwork, you know, prior to this, you know, but it's still amazing how it all comes together. You know, and unfortunately, the guys in there don't get to see a lot of how it is out here, and they don't get to see people's faces while they look at the artwork. You know, and I think, you know, I looked at it from a different point of view probably, you know, from a lot of other people. And uh, the people that are here viewing the artwork, they aren't looking at an inmate's artwork. They're looking at an artist's artwork, you know, and you can see it in their face. You know, they don't even, yes, they realize that it came from a prison, that it came from an inmate, but they're not viewing it like that. And I think that's really, it's a big step in society, I think. The people who are doing this work have all that feeling uh, in, inside of them and to be able to express it and put it on paper for other people to see and enjoy and feel that it's just phenomenal. And really, uh, as well, looking at the beadwork, which is spectacular as well. Um, I would love very much to see a market in Aberdeen uh, so that it would be available for purchase all the time. I'm not an artist, but I really enjoy just seeing how people think sometimes and what it, how they can create things. I love beadwork and the colors and um, there's just so much talent. I really liked uh, the, I think the, it was the Donahue, um, his paintings, particularly the, the one in tones of gray. It looked like a different time period and uh, he had a piece that is, uh, I think it was called Winter, with the sunset and the teepee. I really like that one. The pieces that I got of Mr. Boys are turtle pieces, so they'll be special to me for, for a long time. Ernest Fisher, I know him very well, and his silhouette artwork is just absolutely amazing. Um, I actually haven't seen the pieces that he's got uh, on on display tonight, and unfortunately they're not uh, for sale, but otherwise I'd have had that buck one. I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy that drew uh, Chris Christopherson and Prince and you know Merle Haggard, that guy is an amazing artist. I don't recognize his name, but uh, Mr. Diggs said a lot of the art came from Springfield this time, but that guy is an absolutely amazing artist. So his artwork out of all of it, I think, is, as far as realism goes, is the most outstanding, I think. This is close to my heart, the idea that um, art is the window into the soul. I 
came last year, <clears throat> excuse me, as well. And I am absolutely blown away. First of all, the, um, the tremendous growth. It seems like it's bigger than ever. And um, I love all the variety. Um, I love the fact that um, there, it's like it's full of grace. When you walk in that room, it just feels like it's full of grace because you're experiencing, looking at the transformation of individuals. And, and you're seeing something tangible about the transformation of individuals. So not only is it beautiful to look at, but I just felt healed because I could see the, like I said, the grace, the transformation, the energy that it must have taken to um, create something from all that hurt. Oh, there are some beautiful ones, but I didn't remember the names. I thought the um, horsehair work was amazing. I also um, was quite taken by the um, pencil drawings. They, a lot of them were not for sale. Um, that were the ones that I, I remember one was a grandpa and a, a colt, and uh, it, they took my breath away. I really enjoyed it, great deal. Um, there were several artists that I really, really enjoyed. Um, I liked the Mary piece. Um, I have the guys' names on my phone. I took pictures of the little nameplates. Um, really enjoyed that. And my son actually was incarcerated in prison in Illinois for about four years. And it was really interesting to listen to Matthew and Lawrence and to look at the art. And, and a lot of the things that they said rang true from my son's experience too. So. I liked Matthew Wedekind. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, oh, we loved, my daughter loved Chad Dubois' stuff. All the beading was gorgeous, but she really was taken with Chad Dubois. Um, Aunt Hazel's Grandfather Clock by Troy Verhoff was amazing. Um, Hunter and Bats was the Wedekind that I really enjoyed. Um, the Focus Love Haiku by Shane Blake made me cry. So thank you for that, Shane, it's beautiful. Um, and Sam Snyder's Mary was awesome. It made me laugh and made me think. So yeah, it, it was a wonderful show. I really do appreciate art and there's some very well done art in there. The, the Native American art was really well done and the beadwork was beautiful. I thought it was amazing and uh, I feel so privileged to be a part of it. The discussion, the humanizing of, uh, you know, of the other, the, the people we're supposed to be or taught to be afraid of. Um, and I think it's a wonderful exhibit, and the artwork is just amazing. There were two, um, which I have in fact purchased. <laughs> I had to have them in my own home. One is um, a painting called Moonlight Adobe by Gregory Davis. Thank you, Gregory. Um, it's, it really, really spoke to me, both the image of the breaking darkness with the moon in the center, and uh, the cliffs and adobe, which reminds me of where I lived for 20 years in New Mexico. So that one really touched me. And the other one that really touched me was the beaded haiku, Focus Love um, by Shane Blake. And Shane, your beading is amazing. I saw the, the Buddha last year, I'm pretty sure you did that. Uh, which just was stunning. And this belt, the minute I saw it, I knew I had to have it. So it's going to be in my home and thank you. Both of these works of art and these, uh, and these men will be a part of my life from now on. And I am very grateful for that. Essentially, I was convicted in 2009, and uh, 
fur rape. And in May of 26 this year, the judge completely vacated my sentence, found me innocent, and released me immediately. Well, I think overall, art inside the walls, we'll call it, it's, uh, it allows the inmates to express themselves in a way that's nonviolent, in a way that is uh, beautiful, you know, for lack of a better word. And, you know, the bad part about being a prisoner, being an inmate, is society as a whole, they see the news story, they read the newspaper, and they see the bad side of people, you know. So by creating this art and stuff, you're getting a glimpse into the psyche of the inmate that may have been convicted of something heinously bad, you know, years and years and years ago. But people change, people grow, and you know, people blossom into beautiful things over time, you know, and this artwork, this art show is a way for society to be able to see the good in those people, you know, I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing and I'm glad, glad that we're doing it again. To me, it's, I guess it started out is to, to create you know, I mean, you take something, it's, it's the same as woodworking and stuff. You take something that is bare, something that is nothing, and you create with it. And when you create something, you always put a little of yourself into it. You know, I mean, it's your emotion, it's your feeling, it's, it's who you are in this artwork, you know. And throughout the years, you know, I've done a lot of good pieces and I've done a lot of bad pieces. <laughs> you know, I mean, that kind of comes and goes with the territory. It's amazing um, what Mr. Diggs has started in there is, for lack of a better word, a very widespread and continue to be spread healing process for the inmates in there. You know, and I don't even know if he realizes this or not, you know, but uh, people talk continually about it. People are excited about it. People share about it. People meet down at rec, you know, they sit together at tables during chow and they talk about his groups, you know. And what amazes me more than anything is, as people know, there's gangs, there's cliques, you know, there's things like that within the prison. It's a given, that's any prison you go into. But what amazes me is when you walk into the art group or you walk into the poetry group, you're no longer part of a gang. You're no longer part of a certain clique. You're no longer a certain color. You're part of an artist's group. You're part of a poet's group. And all that other stuff melts away. You know, I mean, and it, you sit around and you talk about art and you talk about feelings and I mean it's it's an amazing time to see these hardened criminals become somebody completely different just even if it's for that hour you know because once you walk back out that door and you're no longer in that little art group you know you got to put that mask back on you know to survive but while we're there it's a completely different situation Leather work and uh, certain beading supplies have to be kept down in the rec room. So you can only work on that stuff during rec times. And in the summertime, you might not be able to work on it at all because you go outside for rec. You know, so you may not be able to go to the rec room at all. So you can't get into the, you know, your art supplies and stuff like that. But as far as beading and uh, drawing and stuff like that, you can do that as much as you want in your room. You're constantly getting write-ups for going on different tiers and getting in trouble because you want to go talk to somebody else that does the same type of artwork as you, you know, to share your ideas and no, that's not allowed. Not uh, You can do it while you're at rec or if you're, you know, if you're able to go down to the rec building or something, but you're not allowed to leave your tier and go to a different tier to speak with somebody. 
that's against the rules. Oh, but yeah, there's people constantly getting in trouble for that because they want to share their artwork, they want to um, bounce their ideas off of other people and stuff like that. So creating art in there is a major thing within the inmates' lives. It keeps everybody sane and grounded. As soon as an art piece is done, it has to be automatically sent out the day that it's done, otherwise it gets confiscated. You're not allowed to yep, you're not allowed to hang on to it or whatever, you know. Like a lot of guys, you know, will try and create a bunch of pieces and then send out for Christmas or something like that or something. It's not allowed. It has to be sent out immediately. Well, me personally, when I would draw or bead, I would sit in my cell, you know, and they're six by nine cells, and there's two people in there, bathrooms in there, sinks in there, everything's in there, you know, and you sit at your little desk, and I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> While you're creating something, you get lost in it, and the bars and the walls just kind of melt away for that time. You know, you might be working on a piece of art or you might be beating something or whatever medium the artist decides to use, you know, I mean, and you'll look up and it's four or five hours later and it's like, wow, what just happened? It's like I time warped, you know, and for that time, I wasn't here, you know, so art does a lot of things other than create something beautiful for, for us to see. political area you see all the time how uh, people let their emotions and their prejudices lead them to act contrary to their own self-interest and you know it should be there should be enough humanity and, uh, and uh, understanding in people to know that when we send people to prison uh, we're gonna get almost all of them back <clears throat> And so from the first day that they're in there, a, an enlightened society would understand their job is, since these people are individuals are going to come back to us, we want them to be better people. And instead, our attitude is to uh, uh, revel in the uh, uh, satisfaction of punishment. Uh, and even apart from the... Uh, from the humanity that you should have to understand and do this, even if you don't have that at all. Just as a dispassionate person uh, in a position of authority is in your own self-interest to take people that if you don't even care about them, to want to produce something that's better for you when they come out, and but, uh, you know, we have people that get lost in, in the, the visceral satisfaction of uh, feeling superior to people and, and making them pay the price for it. I thought that the exhibit was Oh, so interesting. I love one that it has to do uh, with the teepee. Mm. The teepee and winter, it's called winter. I feel very connected with that one because of what's going on in, in um, North Dakota, standing rock. And so I really feel very connected with that painting. When you have canvas and, and color and you can create a dream, and, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. But yeah, I had fun. I had fun watching all the artwork and, and hearing um, Mr. Dix share about his, this great uh, program. It's awesome. I hope that it goes all over.
I came tonight again. I was here last year for the first show. And uh, I bought some jewelry right away because the last time I didn't and I regretted it, I bought myself a pair of beautiful iridescent long beaded earrings. And then later on the other side of the show, I found myself a large medallion with a white and red and bronze butterfly design. And it just suits me perfectly. I'm very proud of it and happy that I could get it. I saw some small paintings that looked to me like they were done from Yosemite Park. And I'm sorry right now, I don't have the artist's name committed to my mind, but they're very beautiful. Um, and, and they did catch my eye. I haven't looked as much as I intend to. I'll be coming back here while the show is still hanging and spend more time. Um, there's also a piece of music that someone wrote in pencil and it looks quite intricate. I do play the piano so I can kind of look at it and see but we're going to be able to hear it soon and I'm looking forward to that. Thank you all for doing the work that you do and I hope you will continue to be encouraged by the fact that we enjoy and appreciate what you do and we think about you every time we see your art or every time I wear my earrings or my necklace I will remember you. I want to try to contact the family so I can have some commissions done because there was a few artists in there that I thought wow I really want to commission something. Um, the beadwork is stunning. Um, the poetry is stunning. Shane, I read your piece about um, the um, cellmate or somebody on your tier that had died, and it was it was really touching. Um, all of the piece, all of the works, the written works that some of you submitted were very very touching, and gave insight to what you're thinking and how even what you are thinking is shared in some way by me. Um, I find myself thinking some of the same thoughts and maybe under different circumstances, but I can, I can relate to them so, so well. Um, thank you for sharing them. Um, every, every single one of you, it's just amazing and just keep doing it, keep doing it. The exhibit is absolutely amazing and stunning and unbelievable. We received over 300 pieces of work from all of you and it's just unbelievable. Um, I, I recognize some of the names from last year and, and have noticed how much some of you have grown artistically and how some of your, your styles have changed and it's just I enjoy it. Everybody that was here enjoys it so much and they're still in there talking about your work. I spoke about when we're in this class how all the color and the games and everything you know just kind of melts away and it's just a group. You know when you're looking at the artwork and stuff and if you go in there and do a testimonial type deal or whatever you know what I mean don't lose the fact that it's an inmate but look past the story, you know. Look at the human side of them. Look at the beauty of them, you know, instead of just the headline.